Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey. Well, welcome, everyone. It's good to have you here for the next broadcast of Jim and Java. I just want to remind you to subscribe to the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel and be sure to hit the bell so that you can be reminded of future videos. We release videos twice a week and hopefully you'll be reminded of that when uh, you subscribe and you will if you click the bell. If you need to reach me, just go to my email address at development effectiveness strategies m at gmail.com if you want to submit questions be sure to do so at devfstrats and use the hashtag jim and java well let's dive right in our first question is from peggy in falls church virginia peggy asks what are the keys to a successful donor presentation well, thanks, Peggy, for that question. Uh, it's important, and I've got some videos out there already on how, in particular, to have a successful presentation. But in short, the bottom line is you want to make sure, first of all, that the individual that you're meeting with understands what the problem is. So often, individuals really are not clued in fully to the problem that exists that was the reason why your organization was founded. So make sure you share with them statistics, results, uh, possibly even videos or pamphlets of individuals who were negatively impacted and is your target audience. Then make sure you remind them of the solution. And of course, hopefully the solution is your organization. Hopefully the activities, programs, projects that you do are going to be the solution to that problem. And then unpack those strategies and programs. What are the things that you do specifically? I've also mentioned in previous videos, what are the things that are unique to your organization? Are there things that you do that no other nonprofit, no other organization does? I, I work with organizations organizations that the go local government sends people to that, whether it be a rescue mission, homeless shelter, uh, food pantry, because the local government doesn't have the funding or the wherewithal or expertise to provide the services that that nonprofit organization has. So make sure you let them know if, if that's unique and be sure to let them know about the results. Results are so important to our donors. They want to make sure that if they're giving money to them an investment, that they are seeing a result from that investment, a return on investment with that. And that often translates into changed lives. Individuals who are freed of poverty, uh, pulled away from human trafficking, pulled away from um, um, a bad or negative situation. So make sure you share that. And then, of course, present the opportunities to be involved. This is not a would you, could you, please, you wouldn't want to ask. What you're sharing with them is an exciting opportunity, perhaps an opportunity that they wouldn't get anywhere else. Remember, these people are going to work every day just living life but feeling like they're really not making a positive contribution to making an impact for our world and changing anything in our world. So presenting these opportunities are exciting for them. We're giving them an opportunity to be involved in something that will change the world, make a difference in their community, or make a difference in someone's life. So make sure you present that and don't be afraid to ask them for a larger amount. Our big, the biggest problem that we have is that we tend to under-challenge people, not over-challenge people. So give them a faith stretching. I don't mean go into someone and ask them for a million dollars, but if you were planning to ask someone for a gift of 500, consider a gift of $1,000 or maybe even $1,200, which could be broken down into $100 a month. So make sure you present that and remember at the end of that, positive or negative, yes or no, make sure that you ask for referrals and thank them and report back to them. Those are the keys to a successful presentation. So Peggy, I hope that helped and answered your question. Our next question is from Matt in Illinois and Matt asks, you talk about donors being insiders. How do you make donors feel more like insiders? 
Well, Matt, that's a great question, and it really comes down to frequency of communication. You think of any healthy and strong relationship that you have in your life, and it really comes down to frequency of communication. It says a lot if you only communicate with someone once a year or once every couple years. Communicating with people frequently, and that doesn't have to be daily or weekly, but it could be monthly or even every other month, but communicate with people. Make them feel special. I have talked about in past videos about insider letters. I do a one-page letter, monarch size piece of paper with three paragraphs. Thank you for your involvement. Paragraph two, here's a life that has been changed. Paragraph three, here's where we're headed in the future. And I don't ask for money in an insider letter. That makes it very sacred. I also present the opportunities to be involved with life partners. So that's not just the F and finances, but that's labor, influence, and expertise. I want them to feel like owners of the organization. And so as a result, I share with them special emails, special videos. I do special video broadcasts, maybe not per person, but to a small handful of individuals, that critical few, that 20% that brings in 80% of the dollars. I'm doing special videos, I'm doing special Zoom calls to those individuals so that they're feeling like they're part of the decision-making process. They're part of our staff in so many ways. And I'm asking for their opinion, I'm asking for their insight. If they're gifted in areas like public relations or in recruitment or marketing or business, finance, I'm asking them for their insight and opinions on those things. And listen, don't make your relationship a one-way conversation. Make it two-way. Let these insiders know that they are very special to us and very special to the organization. And make them feel like they really are owners to the organization. So Matt, I hope that helps. Uh, I've got a number of videos that I'll link above that are related to that. So make sure you check those out. Well, that's it for our broadcast of Jim and Java. Once again, be sure to subscribe and make sure that you click the bell and also Make sure if you need to reach me, you can reach me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And to submit questions, we really rely on your questions. Submit those on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And as I always say, I wish you the best as you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.